everything. All right, guys. So we are back in HTML and CSS part one. <clears throat> and we're in HTML content, common HTML elements. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, uh, if you remember from the previous section, HTML element is basically a tag. Such These are all elements. Anchor tags, paragraph tags, uh, unordered list tags, li tags, all, all elements. And uh, looks like we're going to be doing a ton of stuff with it. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. Oops, I meant to go next. So we have our, it looks like they've already set up our page. If you remember before, I was saying that there's various uh, heading tags, H1 being the largest and H6 being the smallest and various sizes in between. So uh, let's go ahead and in the body, because this is where our content goes, create an H1 tag. And in it, we're just going to go ahead and put the brown bear. And that looks like all we need to do. And we'll run it. And then it's nice and big and bold. Heading tags are really there to make a statement, to be a little bit larger than maybe a paragraph tag or anything like that. Or just floating text or something like that. Speaking of paragraph tags. So a paragraph tag starts with a P and ends with a closing P. And we're going to go ahead and copy paste this in here. Um, similar to how you'd have paragraphs, they'll be on a different line and they'll cause a space at the end as well. So if you have multiple paragraphs, you'll see right here there's a nice gap. That's because that's how a paragraph should be. That's basically it. So you'll see a... It looks like it got rid of our previous paragraph. Let's go ahead and add this P. And we're going to put this in here. So the following subspecies of... Oh. Sorry, it looks like we had a little bit of a brain fart on our IDE here. So we're going to go ahead and add a second paragraph. Let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see another gap between the two. Next, what we're going to do is add an unordered list. So there's ordered lists, which are OLs, and then there's unordered lists, which are ULs. So we're going to go ahead and do a UL. Now, there's nothing in here right now, but this is setting up our list elements. So within the OLs and the ULs, you'll add list items. So you're basically saying, look, start. this is where a list is with the ULs. This is where an unordered list is. And these are the list items, which are our LIs. And notice how they're, they're within the ULs. So we're going to go ahead and add the items, which are Arctos, Arctos, Colorus. These all sound like Pokemon names. I know they're names of bears. And notice how each list item has its own tag as well. And uh, finally, apparently an extinct bear, which is kind of sad that they added that, but I guess that's just the way of life. That is the Nel Nelsani. And this is extinct. Let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see we have our four list items. And they're not numbered because we used a UL tag or an unordered list tag. So next what we want to do outside of the unordered list because we're adding a paragraph here. Now you can add paragraph tags in a li, but that's not what the instructions are. Nor would that make a lot of sense given what we're doing. And we're going to go ahead and add this paragraph tag like so. It's going to copy in the content, paste it in there. So next what we're going to do is we're going to create an ordered list. Looks like we're having a little bit of a issue here with uh, copying over. This st is still in preview mode. So we're, 
we're bound to run into a few uh, little hiccups. There we go. Now, an OL, as I was explaining, is our ordered list starts with the OL tag. Go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. Run that. Again, we don't have any content in here. We're going to go ahead and create three LI items. One for Russia. One for the United States. And then one for Canada. And now when we run it, you'll see that they're numbered. One, two, and three. This is the only difference between an OL and a UL. All right, so we're gonna be working with anchor tags like this. You'll notice this href value. An anchor tag is basically links you to a web page, and later on will be used to link you to various other things, but for the most part, for the, for the context of the simplicity, simplicity Anchor tags are really just used to link you to web pages. So we're going to go ahead and add a anchor tag. So after the first paragraph right here, let's go ahead and run this real quick just so there's no issues. All right, we're going to add anchor tag. Also as a closing bracket. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put in here as the content, learn more. Just going to run that. Now, it, there's there's an anchor tag there. It's just not doing anything. It's not going anywhere. So what we have to do is put this href uh, parameter, and we're going to put HTTP. Notice the quotes. You'll be putting this in quotes so it knows where it's supposed to start. So in, let's go ahead and copy over this link, actually. Put that like so. It's going to run that. And now we have a link. And you can see it's a link because we haven't styled it any differently. And by default, it's going to be blue and underlined to show that it's a link. It's going to I think I zoomed in one too many. So now we have another target attribute. I think I believe I said parameters. Attributes actually the the correct term. Now, what the tar what the uh, target attribute does? Now, some attributes can be used in various types of tags, but not most. And it, in this one, the target attribute, I believe is just for HTML. So you'll notice that we have the, the, again, it's in quotes like so. And what happens here is when we set it equal to blank, it's now going to open up a new web page when we click it. By default, it will go ahead and go to where, why didn't it open up a new page? Why are you making me a liar, yo? Um, but target equals blank underscore blank will actually pop it up in a new window. Um, I'm not quite sure why I didn't there. Now, by default, it will just go to the, it will take your current page and then go to a, another page. So, to add images, pretty straightforward here. We're going to, where do they want us to put this? Below the ordered list, add an image. Okay. It's IMG. IMG, and then you have to say where the image is located. This is usually a URL. This is always a URL, I should say. And notice how there's no closing tag, just this slash right here. Now, depending on what, sometimes this slash is optional. My, my piece of advice is always to put it in there, especially later on advanced frameworks, some of them require it for it to work. So it's just better better habit to just put in the extra slash. So this source, this SRC, is where this image is located. 
So now it will display it. And there's our boy Yogi. So what does the alt attribute do? do? This is um, f to help those users that are visually impaired and they, uh, that's, that's kind of it. Just another aspect to put here. So they can hover over the image. Basically they can hover over the image and then hear what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and add alt tag. It's, not, it's another, um, it's another attribute. So just put a space, put alt, and uh, we'll put brown bear. Actually, Yogi the bear. There we go. So we've added that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and delete. Delete the learn more link you added previously. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead and run this. Go ahead and get rid of it one more time. Seems to be a weird little bug where uh, it's not updating properly. So instead, in index.html, transfer your image on your page by linking by... All right, so... Do they just want us to... Oh, I got it. All right, so they want us to basically show that when you click this image, it can go places. So right now, nothing's happening. It's not linking to anything. So we want, to, we want when you click this image, for it to link to something. So let's go ahead and set this up. We have the href. We have the target. And then we're going to take our closing tag and actually put it after the image. This is going to make it wrap our image to go to this URL. Then we're going to go ahead and put underscore blank. Let's go ahead and run this. And now you'll notice when we hover over it, we have a, a uh, picture. You'll notice in the bottom left hand corner, it'll show the link as well. And it'll open up in a new window. And it'll link you to there. Now, you'll see that there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, it's basically saying, try and make your code readable. You'll notice that I've been kind of doing, this is much more readable than, uh, than just all having it in one long line. That's really the importance of it. You're going to need to make your code as readable as possible, especially as you move on. Uh, if you're trying to be a developer, because you'll be working on teams, some small, some large. But you'll be working with other people, and they need to be able to read your code as well, so you have to follow certain standards. Alright, so we have a BR slash here. Now, what is a BR slash? Sorry, third paragraph. One, two, and... Wait, one, two... Three, here we are. So let's run this real quick. So BR slash is basically um, a, a shorthand way to, of putting in a line. So let's look at our, you see populations right here? It's gonna actually drop of brown bears down a line. So you'll see right here, drop down. That's what the BR slash look. So we're gonna go ahead and delete this line break because uh, makes no sense and it's ugly so let's go ahead and run that and move on okay it's um another thing that uh it's bringing up right now we'll go ahead and run this is what it's basically saying here is when you have nested elements for instance our ol these li's are nested within we want these to be indented we don't want them to be at the same like that 
The reason for that is it shows off how what's within what and what's outside of what. And this is an important concept in programming and um, nesting in general will be used not only in HTML and CSS, but as you move on, it is a crucial part of JavaScript and any object-oriented programming language. So comments. Comments are also extremely important. You'll be working on things quite often, and you'll need to comment things out, comment things in. When you're testing something, you want to try something new. So um, we'll go ahead and we'll just put a comment here. Especially if you are if you want to put something in your code when you're new, you say this sets the title of the browser page. And so this is a comment. It won't display anywhere except in the browser console or in your code like this. So you can look back at it. Let's go ahead and run that. All right, so it did the same thing again. I forgot to run it. So we'll go ahead and put this is a comment. It's going to run that like so. There we go. All right, not going to make the same mistake. There we go. All right, so what did we learn throughout all of this? Because we learned quite a bit. We learned uh, that H1s to H6s come in various sizes, H1 being the largest, H6 being the smallest. We learned about paragraph tags and how they're kind of formatted and what we use those for. We learned about unordered lists and how you have to have list elements or LI elements within it and how they're just dots and not numbered. We learned about ordered lists being numbered. We also learned about the anchor tag or the A tag and uh, the href attribute of it that allows us to link to other pages and other websites and things like that. We learned about the image tag, which is how to put images in there and setting where the image is with that using SRC. We learned about the alt attribute that helps the visually impaired. And uh, we learned that white space doesn't affect your positioning. We didn't really talk about that. Um, that you need to indent when nesting things as well. And we learned about comments. I cannot stress enough to people who are starting out learning HTML, CSS, any programming language, use comments as much as you can because it will help you so much now and then later on. So just my, my best piece of advice there. But uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video if you know someone it would help out. And a special thanks to you supporting me on Patreon. I appreciate it. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Definitely check them out at devmountain.com. If you're looking for a boot camp that's in front-end development, iOS, or UX, go ahead and give them a shot. Tuition includes housing so you can get up and go and fully immerse yourself in the program. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.